Okay, Body Armor Buyer's Guide. We're taking a look at a point blank interceptor body armor. Uh, this is real similar to what's being issued now to the military or what was just recently issued to the military. Um, just for giggles, I put this PAS GT helmet in a similar camo style up on top, but obviously it's not part of the body armor itself. What we're looking at here is a modular system that has a lot of the modular accessories on it. What we're looking at is the, the front side. It opens like a jacket as opposed to most modern body armor where you're going to come in through an arm hole. You're either going to rip something open here like a cummerbund and crawl into it uh, to give you one solid piece of protection up front. This one, um, again, because of its use, it was going to be issued to um, line troops and to you know, people who are untrained. Uh, a lot of times what they wanted to do is make it a kind of conventional. So you peel this, you peel this, and you're into the armor. This is soft armor. This is soft armor with a plate in front. Once you Velcro that and that, they're going to stay together. And you've got a continuous soft body armor panel that way, even though there is a split down the middle. Um, I don't know if you noticed when I had them apart. The groin protector is attached to this front section where the plate is. There are some snaps here. If you're going to have it on for an extended period, you can snap it. There's a small pocket up here. Plenty of PALS webbing, and this is on here for real. Um, super overstitched, at the right dimensions. Um, lots of accessories available for this. In fact, when it's issued, depending on your uh, mission, they're going to give you different uh, pouches and um, pockets to um, accessorize the front. Very useful when you're sitting in a vehicle to have a lot of your gear right on your chest. Um, this one has its shoulder pads in place. Um, not, people don't always use these, but uh, you know, for the demonstration here, we wanted to put it all together. Inside, you might notice um, if we open this up a bit, these do they are designed to wrap around and cover each other. But there's also this inside option installed which comes up on your side with a layer of body armor up into your armpit, keep you nice and secure. Your arm's gonna stick out and through here, and now you've got protection up top, plenty of flexibility, and lots of, this is soft armor, so lots of protection there. Um, moving around to the front here. As it comes up to the front here, depending on what you're gonna be doing with the armor, you can wear this collar. So I have a collar installed here, which is another option and that comes up with a soft body armor panel from about here, up, up, which gives you a lot of extra padding in the shoulders, but more importantly, a lot of um, extra body armor panels in this area. Not right here, but in this area. I don't have it installed. One of the, I think maybe the only option I don't have installed right now is the yoke, um, and that's another piece that comes up and basically chokes you to death right in the front of your throat. Um, it's a good option, I just don't happen to have it stuck on right now. This one has a Grimlock, it's not a standard accessory, uh, but it's a super useful little accessory for anything that uses this PALS webbing. I basically have it attached in a crazy area where I'm not really gonna attach a pouch anyway, but it gives me the option to uh, use it for my hearing protection when I'm at a range, or um, you know, lots of other little things. As we go around to the side here, See that the shoulder again is in place, gives you some flexibility. There's some uh, Velcro areas for unit insignias. The armor panels do come out of the shoulder panels. And a lot of guys um, I've seen and I've heard of modifying this by basically taking a, a small plate and putting it in their shoulder. So now they have a small plate in front and then a small plate on each shoulder, especially good if you're in the turret of a moving vehicle, you know, manning a large machine gun or something. This is uh, 30 pounds worth of armor, basically, so it's definitely stressing the stand that I've got it on. But the stand is holding up, and it's holding it quite, quite well. we got, again, on the back, plenty of PALS webbing, lots of rows um, for Camelback or for um, whatever gear you might want there. Easy accessibility to the plate back here through the top, substantial handle uh, for carrying the armor itself or if this person's injured and you need to help drag them, great place to drag them from. 
I happen to have a couple of large zip ties running through the PALS webbing. Uh, honestly, just because I think it looks kind of cool, but if this was actually being used, um, you know, obviously that might be used to detain a suspect or, um, you know, as a quick way to get some gear back in operation. So kind of old school, definitely kind of heavy, but we're talking two extra large ceramic plates. We're talking soft body armor almost everywhere. We're talking by the time you put on this old fashioned helmet that goes down probably too far around your ears. You don't hear nothing, but hopefully you don't get shot either. So we're looking at some old school interceptor body armor. Okay, believe it or not, we do have this on the rack and then on the scale. Let's just round that up to 30 pounds worth of armor with this interceptor body armor size double XL with the shoulder panels, with the side protectors, with two extra large plates, with the groin protector that's stuck up in there, I mean, with the collar. So uh, 30 pounds worth of bullet stopping power there.